Hello and welcome everyone. I want to give you an introduction how PLM change management is handled in SAP S4HANA. The following functionalities are available in S4HANA on-premise starting with release 2020 FPS1 as well as on cloud systems starting with S4HANA Cloud Edition 2111. In this video I want to give you an overview of the setup and handling of teams and responsibilities in the change record. I will first show you some slides and then jump into the system for a live demo. Please note that we have used the latest S4HANA on-premise system, which is currently shipped to our customers. It has the state of S4HANA 2021 FPS 0. In general, we have two possibilities in the process route to define team responsibilities. The first option is to create teams in the app of Manage Teams and Responsibilities. In this app, you can define team definition, like for example, connect teams to a special change record type. You can define team owners, team members, team function, as well as sub or super teams. The second option to define team responsibilities in a process route is via the classical human resource entities. Here you can assign users to positions as well as to organization structures. These positions and organization units can then be selected in the process route of our change record. How this selections of the different teams and agent is working, I will show you on the last point. I will show you what kind of different agent selections the process route is having available. You will see the selections in the change record as well as in the global process route templates app. Let's now jump into the system to have a closer look into the teams and responsibility capabilities of the change record. First of all, I want to introduce you into the first option to manage teams. This is happening in the teams of manage teams and responsibilities. Here you see all teams which are available in the system. In this example, it's filtered for R&D engineering teams. You also have the possibility to create new ones or delete existing ones. You can also copy existing ones to already have drafts available. In this case, we are accessing our team of engineering. First of all, let's jump into the edit mode. Here you can for sure set up all the general information like the name, the status, the description, the type, and also you have the administrative data available. The next one is the responsibility definition. Here you maintain for which change record type this team is valid. In this example, we have here the change record type DIS maintained. So this means the team is valid of the discrete industry changes change record type. You can for sure also add additional change record types via the for help. In the next section, the team owners of the engineering team are defined. The next section is defining the team members. For sure, additional team members can be added via the create button. Here you also need to maintain the functions for, the, for all the team members. The functions are set up in SPRO customizing. The determination from the functions to the team members is happening here. In this example, we have two members assigned as a bomb engineer function and one team member is assigned as a change controller function. The next two tabs are showing you the sub teams and the super teams. In this case, we have no sub or super teams assigned to our team. Last but not least, we have here the change documents available. So this section is showing us when and who has maintained which fields in this team. This team, what you just have seen, as well as the team members and functions, you will also then later have available in the process route. I will show you on the last point. But now I want to show you on the sub GUI how also classical HR identities can be used to assign them into a process route. The classical human resource entities are maintained in the back end of our system. Therefore, we're going into the transaction PPOME. Here all the HR entities are defined, like the organizational units, the positions, job, persons, users, and so on. In this example, we opening our organizational unit of our already created organization. Here we see that multiple positions 
are assigned to this header organization, as well as multiple sub-organizations are assigned to this header organizations. If we want to create new positions or new organizations, we can, for example, here use this create button. In our example, we have already created a sub position for this organization called change record position 01. To this position, we have assigned a user. This position, as well as this organizational unit, is also available on an agent in the process route. How this selection of teams and agent is working, I will now show you in a process route template. Therefore, we are going back to the Fury site. We are opening the app of the Global Process Route Workbench. We are creating a new Global Process Route template. Now we have a template of the new process route available. We can add a sequential task. On the adding task pop-up, we see here on the task details, the task type, sequential tasks, and the agent type. Via this agent type dropdown, we now have the possibilities to select several agent types. The bottom one, SAP user, is a classical SAP user. The next one, user group, is also a HR entity. Selecting this via the F4 help of the agent ID, we have the different user groups available, which are maintained in the system. As next, we have the team. The team is what we have defined in the Manage Teams and Responsibilities app. Here we see our team of the engineering. Selecting this, all users of this engineering team will receive the workflow task later in the process. We can now maintain additional activity, clicking OK, and then we have the team of our engineering added into the process route template. Let's now add an additional sequential task. As next, we also have the possibility to select the team function. If you remember, the team function is also maintained in the Teams and Responsibilities app. Here we see an overview of the team function, which we have also seen earlier in our other application. Let's now, for example, assign the bomb engineers as our agents. Adding an additional sequential task we can now also maintain a position. A position is a human resource entity, what you have seen on the sub GUI. Searching for our position, what we have just created in the back end, we can just assign this HR entity to our process route template. Adding an additional sequential task, we can also maintain the organizational unit, what we have set up in the human resource entities. Next one is the external user, so this can also be maintained. As shown in the previous video, we can also maintain background task. But now I want to show you how to add a team member into the process route template. This team member we have also seen in our app teams and responsibilities and is part of a team and has been assigned to a team function. Here we are seeing all the team members which are part of some teams. Saving this process route template, we can also make it available on the process route section of our change record. Let's jump in our change record application to review this template. In our process route section of our change record, we can directly load the template, what we just have been created after activation. Here we see the different agents, what we just have defined in the process route section. The first one is the team member. 
Next one is the change record position. So this HR entity, what we have defined in the sub GUI. The next one is the team function coming from the teams and responsibility app, as well as our team, what we have in the beginning defined in our teams and responsibility app. Thank you, everyone. I hope I gave you a first overview how teams and responsibilities are set up and maintained on a process route. You should now understand what different agent types can be used to process a process route work item.